What's going on guys? My name is Peter Katani and I'm here to keep talking about this new set coming out on August 2nd. Um, if you are interested in singles or any product from this set, please, pbg.com. But now, I will show you a new deck that I'm working on. It is Kaba from Universe 6. You get this leader from the starter decks. Because I believe there's two. There's one with King Vegeta, and then the expert level is this Kaba, which is actually very interesting. This Kaba is pretty good. Um, it has a permanent that makes it not great, but the permanent is you can't have non universe six battle cards in your deck outside of Vegeta. You can have any Vegeta, not Vegeta BR, not Vegeta Zeno, but Vegeta uh, in your decks or Universe 6, but that's it. You can't put anything else. So come Crisis Crusher, which is one of my favorite cards right now, or any cards that you would sideboard that are battle cards that are good, you can't play them. That's kind of like hinders his leader a little bit, but he's quite interesting. Another ability he has is Auto. When you play, when a blue or yellow Universe 6 card is played in the battle area, that card gains 5,000 power, okay? Then choose up to one of your life and add it to your hand. That's not once per turn. So if you have a bunch of one drops, you can literally like turn one, play one drop, take a life. Cool. Turn two, play one drop, play one drop, take two life. And then like, let's say your opponent swung at you, you can awaken turn two. But we're not fully trying to do that. We're trying to awaken maybe by turn three. But turn two, that's, uh, may, I don't know. I don't know. That's not how I designed the deck. But this is just a skeleton. I'm going to explain to you my reasonings for these cards. And if you guys change it up. Because there is some good one drops. There's a one drop Kaba that draws a card. That's it. That's all it does. But it's one drop. And theoretically it draws two cards. Because one from deck. One from life with this leader ability. When you have four or less life. You get to untap two energy. Cool. Cool. Choose two. Yep. Two energy. And go to the flip side. Flip side. This card gains 5,000 power if all your opponent's energy is in rest mode. It's quite interesting. So it can theoretically bean himself if your opponent plays a big um, a big drop, taps out forward to try to swing, you're already a 20k leader. Pretty good. Next, when this card attacks, draw one card. Those are the best effects. That's the best effect you can have. When your opponent's leader card attacks, if all your opponent's energy is in rest mode, choose two of your opponent's energy cards chosen with this skill cannot be switched to active during your opponent's next charge phase not bad of course there's ways to play around and your opponent just doesn't play anything and just swings with leader to begin with cool problem solved um but it makes your opponent swing first it makes your opponent's leader swing first and then play whatever he's going to play so you can kind of trap them with flying nimbus this flying nimbus and this leader it's a good combination because most of the time they're going to swing with leader first then he has an auto once per turn and this is the reason we made the deck outside of like hit and the reason i didn't make hit i probably will eventually but uh i figure everyone's on hit they already see like oh my god hit's really good they're not wrong but this one is auto once per turn in words when one of your card skills switches your opponent's battle card or energy to rest mode draw a card that's on your turn or your opponent's turn as long as your skill is tapping something down you are going to draw a card and this is where the leader shines this is where we're drawing a lot we can do it all on our turn so we swing with leader draw a card then use a the skill draw another card on our opponent's turn we tap something down we draw a card it's pretty good we're gonna have a hand size so Sleep side, we're not gonna draw too much. But once we're awaken, we going we're giving them the business. But let's talk about each card. Let's sort it by cost, cause I like explaining everything small to the top. Um, oh look at the sensor bean. You know me and my sideboards is cards you can play. We'll talk about that soon. So, first card is a one drop kale. For one blue, permanent. This card cannot be KO'd by opponent skill. So it stays on the board. As long as it doesn't get warped or placed in the drop area, which is not KOing it, um, it st stays on the board. Pretty good. When you play this card, choose up to one blue or yellow Universe 6 card in your drop area with energy cost 3 or more and add to your hand. So when you play it, you automatically grab a card from your drop area, add it to your hand. Solid. 
good enough. It replaces itself. Instead of those abilities with one drops that draw you a random card and maybe it's not going to help, this one grabs a card that you specifically need. We like. Two Time Magic, two Flying Nimbus, two Crushing Balls. Again, this is a skeleton of a deck. You figure out what you like. Maybe you like four Time Magic. Uh, maybe you like three Time Magic, three Crusher Balls. Um, or Flying Nimbus because you like that they swing with their leader first and then swing with their battle cards. He switches around. Uh, but right now, the way I'm trying this deck out, I'm putting 2-2-2 two, two, two just because I'm in the size of what I want. Um, by the way, Crushing Ball, they come in and play tapped. You don't tap something down, so you will not draw a card with Vegeta. In case you think that was a combo, it's not. It's not. When they're playing a card, you crush your ball, and it comes in and play tap, but that's not one of your skills, tapping something down. So you will not draw a card with the leader's ability. And why do you play Crusher Ball outside of Matabo, the, the World Tournament card? Well, that's because he's not a Universe 6, so we can't play him. So we have to go into Crusher Ball. Next is this one drop, Kefla. Um, can't be KO'd by opponent skills. Great. Auto, when you play this card, look at the top 5 of your deck. Choose one yellow or blue Universe 6 amongst them, add it to your hand. Well, outside of these little event cards right here, so we have a total of nine, everything else is Universe 6. So, most of the time, it's not going to miss unless you hit five event cards, then that's just bad luck and you're missing. But outside of that, you're good. This hit, quite interesting. Bandai's learning because this thing only has 9k power, it's not even 10, so it can't even really swing at a leader. Um, it has an ability when you play this card from hand, from hand, from hand. Please know it's from hand. Um, your opponent chooses one card from their hand and send it a warp. Okay, why did I make it a big deal from hand? Well, let's read the next effect. Active main, send this card to the owner's warp. At the start of your next main phase, if your leader card is a yellow universe six card, play that card that was sent to warp by this skill to its owner's battle area. Okay. Um, so, you send this card to warp, and it comes back in the bonus uh, battle area. Actually, while I'm reading here, doing the recording, I was somewhat confused for a second, just a second, barely noticeable, a second, but the way it sounds really quick, play the card that was sent to warp by this skill to its, this skill in its owner's battle area. So, I know it's talking about hit, but it has this really cool ability on top, that when you play this card... From your hand, your opponent chooses one card from their hand and sends it to warp. Okay, it never comes back. But this active main literally says, send this card to the owner's warp at the start of your main phase. If your leader is yellow, universe 6, play the card that was sent to warp by this skill. Okay, so this, this skill, I'm assuming it's active main. Could be wrong. But this skill is active main part in that paragraph. Because this card can be super confusing in the sense of, oh, well, I'm sending this to warp, let's say, Gogeta 7. What? <laughs> and if I bring, <laughs> I warp this, bring it back, all right, this comes back, and Gogeta 7 comes back. Oh, no, 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 we can't do that. So I'm pretty sure, as I'm reading it right now, because I got a little scared, I'm like, no, I didn't play it like that. Um, the auto is one thing, cool, it's its own separate thing. And then this skill is the active main and the text box there. So, he goes away, comes back at the start, but when he comes back, he doesn't get his effect to keep warping a card out of your opponent's hand because it's not being played from the hand, it's being played from the warp. Remember that. I'm glad we got this little clarification. If I'm wrong, forgive me. I'm not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure I'm okay on this. Next card is for the super combo of Universe 6. It's basically searchable in the top 5 with Kefla um, and can be used if your life is at 5 or less. We like those. Even though we still want to awaken, sometimes we got to defend early on big pushes. This card. I like this card a lot. Uh, some friends that I showed this list are like, oh, you should make that bean. Well, again, I don't like putting bean on everything. Like, just because I play blue doesn't mean, oh, I have to play bean. I understand how good it is. But in a non-storm meta, this three-drop event card, and I understand it's three. It's kind of heavy. Let's read what it does. Energy exhaust. When you charge it, it, it becomes tapped. Okay, that's not a big deal. It's an event card. We're trying not to charge it. Counterplay. The battle card your opponent is playing is played in rest mode with the skill negated. So that's Crusher Ball 
and Cold Bloodlust in one card. Then you draw one card. For three energy, I got three effects all in total. That's huge. Um, if your life is at three or less, you choose one of your blue or yellow energy and put it to active. So it almost costs only two energy to tap something down, negate its effect for the turn, and the card replace itself. This card is incredible. I know it's not, oh my god, not the best card, la la bb. I get that. I get that. But I'm a big fan of it and I want to make it work. Uh, the fact that it's blue, yellow, it's perfect because let's say it's dead in the hand. I don't have that uh, energy to to play. I can pitch it for Aegis. I'm praying I'm saying that right because I know I've been messing up. But uh, the card that you pitch a blue and yellow to untap two, it's blue and yellow. It doesn't have to be a battle card. So kind of cool to have that. Next is going to be this counterplay, which is kind of like Crusher Ball. Um, but it gets around Deflect. Let's explain. This counterplay, the counterplay is play this card. So it's not affecting the Deflect creature whatsoever when you're playing it. That's a big uh, factor. Permanent, if you have a multicolor card in your energy, reduce it by one. So instead of being a three cost, it's a two cost 15k. Pretty good. When you play this card, choose one of your opponent's battle card, ignoring barrier, and switch to rest mode. Then draw one card if it's your opponent's turn. So you can play it on your turn for two, tap something down, ignoring barrier. Not bad. Or you can play it on your opponent's turn and tap something down and draw a card. And when you tap something down with the leader's ability, you get to draw a card. So just by paying two, you draw two cards. All right. This leader's going to see some play then. Um, next is this four drop. Ooh, when are we ever going to pay four or not? It's critical. So we like that already. During your turn, at the end of the battle after you combo with this card, choose up to one blue kale card from your battle area and play this on top of it. So it's just like the old school monkeys, the apes, the ones that you will combo, and as long as there's the name that's looking for to evolve over, it evolves right over it. Perfect. The other auto is when you play this card, so evolving is still playing. When you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode, negate its skill for the duration of the turn, and return it to its owner's hand. Now, why does it say negate to the duration of the turn? I'm not quite sure because it's going to go right back to its hand. But this is such a good effect because uh, outside of barrier, because you can't choose barrier, let's say the monster blows up. Oh my god, people watch it like Zamasu. And indestructibles on the field. How would I get rid of that card? Well, something this simple. We negate its skill because it, it swung. It's indestructible, it's swung. We negated skill and put it back into the hand. Boom, we got rid of indestructible options. Cool little things to do. Um, of course, when you play this card, it's basically, that's you can only play it on your turn um, because it says during your turn when you combo with it. So it's on your turn. It's not like you can combo on your opponent's turn. It evolves, you do these things. That's a no-no. But still a very good card. Next is this monster this is better than um indestructible in a way let me explain what it does it is a rival blue yellow so as long as blue yellow is being comboed on the field you can pay one yellow and bring this out so you don't have to pay its ridiculous four costs you can just pay for one yellow as energy exhaust of course it's permanent is reduce the combo cost of all your blue and yellow universe six cards in in the hand by one so this deck is heavy on ones. This is a one. This is a one. And, bro, you're going to see a bunch of ones. This guy makes them all zero. So it's just like the ape, which made all the Saiyan cards zero. This one makes all our deck cards zero. Really good. And it has this permanent. If this card is removed from the battle area by an important skill, skill, damage can kill it. That's not a skill. Damage can't it will get rid of this. But any kind of fi uh, skill to bounce it, to banish it, to anything that's not Zamasu that's negating it, um, you may choose one card from your hand and place it in the drop area instead. So you get to save it as long as it's getting removed by its skill. If you do, this card remains in the battle area, switch it to rest mode, then choose one of your opponent's energy and switch it to rest mode. So if you try to kill it, I'm definitely going to save it. I'm going to hold one card somehow to save this card from dying by a skill. Then I rest one of your energies down and I draw a card with my leader ability. Pretty good. Next is this really good Kale. Khalifa. This one's Khalifa. Um, Arrival, blue, yellow. We love that. The fact that it comes out so easy. Energy exhaust. Understandable. Multicolor cards. Auto, when you play this card, if your leader card is a universe 6 
and your it's your opponent's turn when you combo with this card. Not when you play this card. When you combo with this card and it's your opponent's turn, choose one of your opponent's energy, switch it to rest mode. If you do, this skill is negated for the rest of the turn. Okay. Not a big deal. That, that basically means like if you have three in your hand, you combo three, you can't tap three of their energy down. That's broken. It's got to be some balance. So before we complain about it, Bandai, make sure to once per turn. Okay. And then it has an auto. When you play this card during your turn, choose one of your opponent's battle cards, switch to rest mode, then negate its skill until the end of your opponent's next turn. So you shut something down completely. Really good card. Um, big fan. Comes out super easy with the arrival. You just basically combo with a multicolor card and then bring this out. And when you bring it out, you tap something down. You negate a skill. When you tap something down, you get to draw with your leader ability. So you pretty much lost nothing out of it. Really good card altogether. Next is this Kefla. Double strike. Not bad. We finally see a double strike. During your turn, during your turn, at the end of when you combo with this, it's one of those monkey effects that if you combo, it evolves over a smaller version or another version. Cool. When you play this card, choose one of your opponent's battle cards or energy and switch to rest mode. So on your turn, when you play it, you switch something to rest mode, energy or battle card, and draw a card basically because of your leader's ability. We draw it a lot, guys, and it's double strike 20k. We like it. It's pretty much going to be free as long as you have this guy on the board. Solid. And what it goes over is this nice little one drop. Our little one drop package evolves into four drops. We're good. Next is this hit. Very interesting hit. We don't know if it's good yet. It might be. It's EX Evolve. Two yellows and one colorless over a yellow hit with energy cost of two. Which is fine because the only hit we have is this yellow two. Um, and it runs away every time. When you play it, your opponent warps a card. Then you want to banish this hit every turn because he's never swinging. With 9k, he's not going to swing. Um, just run away, run away, run away until you get to 3 energy, which pretty much could be next turn or future when you can play this or when you want to play this. You want to evolve. It has dual attack and auto bond 2. Bond 2 means you have to have 2, two universe 6 because bond 2 universe 6. You got to have 2 universe 6. We have a universe 6 deck, so it's totally fine. When this card evolves into this card, when a card evolves into this card. Gotta practice on that reading. Uh, if your leader is a yellow universe 6, which we are, we are a yellow universe 6. Boom. Uh, and you have four more energy. This is the perfect time to do it with four more. Flip your opponent's leader card to its front, so it's sleep mode. Nice. If you do, your opponent can't activate its leader's awakening or wish skill until the end of their next turn. So, on your turn, and even on their turn, they're back to their front side. And if it's a leader that does, doesn't does draw when they attack, that's huge. Um, against wish leaders, that's also big because by the time they awoken or wish to go to the back side, uh, they search all the Dragon Balls. So all those wish leaders pretty much are vanilla. So it's 10k on your turn, and their next turn, they can't activate Desire for free. Uh, and that's just a big thing. That That's actually just the main thing, that they can't activate the desire free. Sure, they can awaken Wish at the end of their turn or basically on your next turn, but you don't care by then. By then, you have two solid turns, one to attack heavily and two knowing that the leader's not going to put any pressure on you. So this is really good. But then there's more. Active main once per turn, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards, negate its skill for duration of turn. That's huge. And send it to the owner's warp. At the end of your opponent's next turn, play the card that was sent to war by this skill to the owner's battle area in rest mode very very strong insanely strong so again we're going to just say barrier can't touch again barrier is a horrible word for this game but instructable negated skill send it to war we're not dealing with it until the end of their turn when it comes back and it's once per turn we're going to do it again all right so i had to pause the video i was choking i don't know what happened but against green broly um, you know how devastating it is when you swing with a battle card, they discard a card, they pop something, even ignoring barrier if they're in the 8, you don't gotta worry, you negate the skill and send a warp, you break the chain, since you negated the skill, they can't bring the next chain up, um, very strong ability, and the fact that it's once per turn, every turn when it comes back out on your opponent's end phase, on your turn, get rid of it again, boom, this hit is incredible, and last is this Khalifa. 
Um, Union Patara. So you have to get rid for one yellow. You gotta get rid of a blue kale and a yellow Khalifa with energy cost of four or more. Now, I did try to ask our friend Casey for the ruling. He says both of them has to be four. I could be wrong. Not quite sure. Believe me, I trust Casey with everything though. Since these are new cards, you know we're gonna get an F A Q. FAQ, I think it's called. Um, we're going to get all the answers we're looking for. But right now, I'm playing it as I can get rid of the one-drop Kale and the four-drop Khalifa and then Union Pratar for this. If that's wrong, that's okay because, you know what, well, we still play four-drop, four-drops either way. Um, you bring it out. It's Barrier. Awesome. It's Aegis. God, I hope I'm saying that right. It's such a weird word. Um... And as an auto, when you activate Aegis, choose up to three of your opponent's energy and switch them to rest mode. So on the defense step, mind you, it, it sounds broken, but it's not. Because it can only be activated on the st defense step when your opponent attacks. Now when you attack or anything, your opponent has to defect, attack to activate Aegis to put three down. So now your opponent has to play their bomb first, then swing with whatever so you don't tap all three energy down. Um, so it's very difficult to go against this leader because this leader says if all energies are tapped down, then with its auto, if they swing with the leader, you shut two down. This one is going to not let you play your bomb, so it gets really confusing. Once you have these two on the board, this girl has barriers, she's staying on the board, it becomes very difficult. I think this leader is really interesting come new set. Um, I'm trying to make it as good and competitive as possible, but I'm not quite sure. The other Universe 6 leader that people are looking into is hit, hit, and he looks good, but I really like how much I can draw with this leader. So, this is a skeleton. Try it out. Let me know in the comments the little things different. If you need some little pointers here and there on the side, let me see. I scroll up. Boom. Now you can see it. Look, let me look up there. Um, Sensu Bean, again, that's all preference. If you like Sensu Bean, understandable. Sensu Bean is a great card. It helps you extend plays. I just didn't see how important it is, but... I've been wrong before, so maybe it's super important to come next format. I just see it as eh, okay. Um, this negate it's it counts basically two times because you can negate and while it's in the grave, you run no overrun, so it's going to be in the grave. You can pitch a card and negate again. The ability to rest on energy cost one or less and switch it to rest mode cool. One that effect of one or less has been since like set one. Like, uh, full power energy, it destroys a one or less. We still do not know what less is. I don't think there's a zero drop. Oh, that's probably what it is. There's a zero drop battle card because it should have been tokens, but you can't do tokens because they don't have an energy cost. Well, I guess that's great. You know, they have never brought out uh, less than one battle card yet, but it can tap if that ever comes out. So, this is just basically just a negate. Um, but the fact that it can rest, let's say, a one drop, we get to draw a card strategies um this kale really good it's a two drop like green kaba one that checks top 10 this one is blue check top 10 for a yellow or blue kaba or khalifa energy costs two or less and play it really good the thing is since this deck is not designed to use this card because let's say hit um hit it's gonna have a bunch of one and two drops so it can use this effect a lot more this one can only pull out this girl so that's why we're not running it. And in case you're wondering, oh, why not this card? It's pretty good. It's like a plus. Can't. Not in this build. Um, this guy works. He's universe six. And he's a negate, negating skills. It's just, I didn't think he was super needed for this deck. And believe me, I love this card. Except I'm already negating skills. I'm already comboing out a bunch of stuff. I don't need it. And last but not least, I just found out about this card. I did not know about it when I was making a deck. It is a Vegeta, so it's playable. And I believe it comes in the new, the same deck that this is coming out. It's dual attack. We like dual attack. Very strong. 20k. Auto, when you play this card and your leader is yellow, if your opponent has four more energy and you have Kaba in play, your opponent needs four energy. You need to have a yellow leader. And a combo has and a Kaba has to be in play. That's three requirements. If outside of that, this card, all right. Um choose up to two of your opponent's energy switch into rest mode and the cards chosen by the skill cannot be switched to active during your opponent's next charge phase good just not great so understand that it can't be switched to active 
during my opponent's next charge phase, but let's say they have Dimensional Magic and they uh, spark and negate, untap two, they can untap those two. Because what this stops it from untapping is from my opponent's charge phase or untap phase. That That's it. Um, during your opponent, yeah, charge phase. It, that's that's the only time that it gets untapped and it's just like, all right, cool. I could be wrong on that ruling, but based on how it is, nothing is stopping it. It's just stopping that it can't be untapped on that phase. But if you untap it through another way, let's say a beam, dimensional magic, then it breaks that rule uh, if, if you tap them out. If you tap them, they're still probably locked. But if they stand up and you keep them stand, then you don't have to worry about being untapped. Good card, though. For sure, it's strong. It slows down your opponent. There's ways around it, but I do like the card. I just, since I don't run Kaba in the list, I didn't see the point or how I could play it. I'll have to make the deck completely different, and I like where it's going. It's literally just trying to get to Awaken side and drawing infinite and outplaying your opponent with everything. Try it out. Let me know what you think. This is my other take of the deck. So far, I've done, I've done a blue-yellow. Oh, I've done two blue-yellows. I didn't know. I did Zamasu. I did Old School Broly because... You know, I have to do it. And now this. I don't know what I'm doing next, but till next time, I'll see you guys next.